Make sure that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Growing up uh, outside of Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, Thanksgiving was my favorite day of the year. Uh, most often we went to my grandmother's house, and I would say she probably ate earlier than most of you. She liked to serve uh, starting around 10.30 a.m. And uh, not kidding there. <laughs> my grandmother used to like to go to sleep around 6.30 p.m. So uh, she liked to, so I was fine with me as a kid because that just meant we got to eat all day long um, and play with my cousins and things. We had plenty of time after dinner then. Um, but one of the things that my mother started that I'll never forget is a tradition that really touched me about Thanksgiving. And before we would gather around to say grace, my mother would ask everyone um, that was there to talk about some of the things that they were thankful for things that they were grateful for. And even as a small boy, I always looked forward to that because there was always such a diversity of different things that people could um, be thankful for and gracious for. Sometimes, though, I think of another uh, Thanksgiving when I was a little bit older where I don't think I expressed the gratitude that I wished I had. Uh, whenever I was uh, in college, some of you might know that I was uh, on the radio. I had a sports talk show while I was there. And... Uh, I thought the people on ESPN around Thanksgiving time, they kept saying, it's turkey day. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. I'll sound cool. So on my show, I'll keep saying, we're the turkey day and stuff like that all, like, all show long. And uh, it was only after the show that I started thinking, I didn't even say the words Thanksgiving. I didn't even give credence to the name of giving thanks to God, that I had a, a platform where potentially people were listening. And um, I didn't even share about any of God's blessings, and I always regretted that. And um, I always kept that in mind as I went on and I thought to myself, I'm not going to miss any more chances around Thanksgiving to talk about thanking God for the things that he has done. And so I'm sure pretty much every one of us will gather with friends and family on Thursday and probably have a meal of some kind and celebrate this day of food and fellowship. But I hope that in many ways we never forget that it was truly set aside as a day to thank God, to thank him for all the blessings and wonderful things that he has given to all of us in our lives. And when we have that attitude, it, it helps us to keep everything else in the right perspective. Our nation has a very long history of giving thanks to God. Um, president Washington was the first president, and he was also the first to issue a national day of thanksgiving, and he did so on the 3rd of October in the year 1789 with the following proclamation that I'd like to read to you now. By President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Where it, it is the duty of nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be gracious for his benefit, to humbly implore his protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have, by joint committee, requested me to recommend to the people of these United States a day of public thanksgiving and of prayer, to be observed by acknowledge with grateful hearts the favor of Almighty God. By affording them the opportunity to establish a government that seeks their safety and happiness. Now, I therefore assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted to the people of these states in service to the great and glorious being who is the benefactor and author of all good that was, that is, or will ever be. That we may unite in the most humble of offering of prayers to the great Lord and ruler of all nations, beseech him to pardon both our national and private transgressions, to enable us, whether in public or private, to perform our duties properly and punctually, to promote knowledge and to practice true religion and virtue, to increase science among us all, and to, 
grant unto all mankind the degree of prosperity that God alone knows best. Given by the hand of the President in the City of New York on the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. Two of the greatest words in any language are thank you. Uh, we often teach it as one of the first things that we want children to say. When someone gives you something or they perform a task for you, we teach them to say thank you and gratitude. And as children of our Heavenly Father, one of the first and basic things that we all need to do is to thank God. To thank God when he does something for us, when he gives us something. And it is so proper and right that we pause this week to do so to think about our blessings and to thank him, to thank the one who has made all things possible for us. But we do know that sometimes we forget to do so. See, that's the trouble with getting something on a regular basis. We just sort of expect to get it. Sort of this entitlement mindset that sort of crept into all aspects of our society. And that attitude is wrong because it forgets to properly give gratitude and thanks to God. And so sometimes all of us act like spoiled little children who just say, give me more, give me, give me, give me, and we never truly say thank you. We never even thank Jesus for giving us the one need that is above all other needs, that he has offered to us salvation, that he has forgiven us of our sins and our transgressions, that that one thing alone should be enough that we would just want to be filled with such gratitude and thankfulness that we would want to just, just have it outflow from us, just pour out of our hearts. Because the God who made us and loved us died in our stead, who took our place, who took our pain and our suffering, our sin and our transgressions that Jesus Christ chose to do that and even in the midst of his suffering in the midst of him coming to earth we see countless times in the scripture that even in his agony he was gracious and thankful to God for where he was so if Jesus thanked the father surely we can as well in our passage today Paul uses a phrase where he's talking about sort of echoing to be gracious in all circumstances. All circumstances, we think, surely he cannot mean that. Has he met my children? <laughs> Does he know the, these people on the highway and how they drive? Does he know about the people at work and their habits that they do all the time? Yeah, he knows all those things. No matter how terrible we find our circumstances, the thing is that we'll find God with us in those circumstances. And when we find out that God is with us, then truly all those things about the driving and about our children or frustrations, work, whatever else, they melt away in comparison to who God is and what he has done. Because you see, in every one of our lives, unpleasant things are going to happen. There's going to be pain and hurt and loss. And we don't like those things. And they're not good for us. We, we don't want them. But no matter how much those things happen, we have someone who is with us. There was a movie a few years ago that I think perfectly illustrates this point. It was called Signs. I don't know how many of you may have seen it? It starred Mel Gibson. It was a movie supposedly about alien invasion. But really, the undertow was about faith. Mel Gibson's character in the film was a former Anglican priest. And he's talking to his children in one scene about 14 lights that have mysteriously come into the sky, which people are concerned about whether this is some sort of UFO invasion. And he says the following to his children. People break down into two groups. 
When they experience something lucky, group one sees it as more than luck, more than coincidence. They see it as a sign, evidence that there is someone up there watching out for them. Group two, though, sees it as pure luck, a happy turn of chance. I'm sure the people in group number two are looking at those 14 lights in a very suspicious way. For them, the situation is 50-50. It could be bad, but it could be good. But deep down inside, whatever happens, they're on their own. And that, well, that fills them with fear. There are those type of people. But there are a lot of other people in group one. And when they see those lights, they see a miracle. And deep down inside, they know that whatever's going to happen, there is someone there to help them. And that, and that fills them with hope. You see, you have to ask yourself, what type of person are you? Are you the kind of person that sees signs and miracles? Are you to believe people just get lucky? Is it possible there are no coincidences? What type of person are you? A person who knows there is a God and that you never have to be alone. And no matter what happens, Whatever circumstances come in your life, there's a God with you. And that should fill us with hope. Or the type of person who doesn't know this God, who only sees their life as alone, who's constantly filled with fear. You see, when we look at the world, though, we're, we're overwhelmed, really, with the evidence of God's goodness, the beauty that he has created, his presence is stamped on all of creation. And so in this time, as winter is approaching and so quickly came upon us yesterday, we stop and we pause and we think about those signs, about those miracles, about the things that have taken place in your individual life that God has surely done for you. Hopefully right now you're thinking of something. You're thinking of actual moments where God, his presence was felt in your life. Just pause and say thank you. Thank you, God, for that thing, for that time you were with me, from that time you helped me through that, from the time you stopped me from doing that, from that time you helped me through that time. There might be some of you, though, that are here today and you're having a hard time thinking about a lot of blessings. Maybe you're kind of feeling overwhelmed right now with stress or anxiety or fear or pain emotionally or physically. And maybe you don't feel particularly blessed. Well, how then do we overcome that feeling of apathy when we live in a culture that's very apathetic and doesn't want to give credit to God? I think the words of a Men by the name of Dr. Dale Robinsons gave me powerful insight when he wrote, I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems. But I have come to realize that they have problems because they complain. Complaining changes nothing. It doesn't make a situation better. It simply amplifies frustration, spreads discontent and discord, and invokes an invitation to Satan to wreak havoc in our lives. Complaining makes us miserable. So stop complaining. Now I know easier said than done. But we can choose to focus on those negative things, and it's only going to make us more miserable. It's only going to <coughs> increase discord. It's going to produce frustration. <coughs> or we focus on the blessings that we know that God has given to us. Sometimes we don't think about the ways that we're truly blessed. You know that if we just woke up and survived the last week, we're more blessed than six million people on this planet who did not. Did you experience any war or loneliness, imprisonment, 
torture or starvation last week. No more blessed than fifth, five, 500 million people who experienced one of those things in the last week. If you can attend church today with no fear of someone coming in to arrest us or harass us or a mob threatening physical violence against us, we're more blessed than almost a billion people on this planet. If you have food in your refrigerator, are you wearing clothes? It seems like everyone is. <laughs> you have a roof over our head, a bed to sleep in. We're more blessed than 75% of the people on this planet. Those facts alone put us in the top 25% of wealth. If you actually have money in a bank account, in a savings account, then you are in the top 8% of wealth in the world. 8%, 92% of people do not have money in a bank account. We have a lot to be thankful for. And we have an obligation to use our blessings to bless others. Friends, we need to be thankful for a lot of things. Sometimes we don't even think about those things that we could be thankful for. Be thankful when you don't know everything because you still have a chance to learn. Be thankful when something doesn't go your way because it produces you an opportunity to grow. Be thankful when you feel limited because you can still have an opportunity to try again. Be thankful when at first something maybe doesn't go the way you want because it builds strength and character. Be thankful that you made a mistake because you have the opportunity to correct that mistake and to learn from your, life, from your lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary and worn out because you, my friends, have made a difference. We have a lot to be thankful for. I remember a few years ago, I guess more than a few now, I was in Haiti one January, uh, and because it was January, the coolest month of the year, it was only about 92 uh, in the morning. <laughs> And uh, I was at a worship service and uh, open air um, windows, you know, no glass or panes or anything. Basically standing room only, we're huddled in here. Uh, certainly not to anything that we would probably want to draw up uh, if we were planning a new building here or something like that. Uh, concrete, very, very hot, very, very, very hot. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, I'm pretty hot. I hope this uh, is over soon because I'm very uncomfortable. Um, but throughout the worship service, we came to the part where they had a praise time. And the praise time went on and on and on and on and on and on. As people that barely had enough food to feed their families or put clothes on their back or certainly didn't have money in a bank account, Thank God for their food. Thank God for their relationship. Thank God for their families. Thank God for delivering them for this and that and this. It just went on and on and on, praising and thanking God for who he was and what he had done. And I don't think I'll ever forget how moving that experience was. And my prayer is that we all see our lives in that way. That we look around and that every day and every moment of every day is an opportunity to be grateful and to be thankful to God who has given us so, so much. He has blessed us beyond measure and he deserves our praise and our thanksgiving. That he has entrusted us with it, that we extend that and it's contagious when we want to be that way, that we want to bless other people by expressing our gratitude as well. I'd like to close by reading a proclamation of thanksgiving that was issued by uh, President Lincoln in 19, uh, 1863. He writes, the year is drawing towards its close. It's been filled with blessings, fruitful fields and beautiful skies. To these bounties which we have enjoyed, we are sometimes prone to forget the source from which they come. They cannot penetrate or even soften the heart which is insensitive to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. 
In the midst of this civil war of an equal magnitude and severity, no human counsel has devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out such great things. They are the gracious gift of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for sin, has nevertheless remained merciful. It seems to me, then, fit and proper that we should solemnly, reverently, gratefully invite all citizens in every part of these United States, to those who are at sea, sojourners in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving, praise, and prayer to our benefactor, the Father who dwells in heaven. And I recommend to them that while offering this up, all that is justly due him, with singular deliverance and blessing that they do with humble penance for our national perseverance and disobedience, commend to his tender care then all who have become widows, orphans, mourners, sufferers, in this lamentable civil strife which we are unavoidably engaged. That I feverishly implore the Almighty to heal the wounds of this nation, to restore it as soon as may be consistent with divine purposes, that we may find the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. President Abraham Lincoln. Let us pray. God, thank you. Thank you for every blessing that we have in our lives. And I just ask that we constantly have a spirit and attitude of thanksgiving, that in all situations and all circumstances, we know that you are with us and that we have the opportunity to, by our words, our attitudes, and our actions, to give thanks to you and to encourage those who are around us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. At this time, we will share our phrases and our prayer requests. Is there anything that you wish to share at this time? I know that I am truly blessed, and I praise the Lord for being with me each and every day, because living alone isn't fun. And if I didn't have him, I would be alone. Thank you so much. All of us can be alone, but like you said, we're never truly alone. my niece Renee is having surgery on Wednesday and the doctor thinks it's cancer. We will definitely pray for Renee. Lyle. Uh, I got a note here from Beth. It says, can you please ask prayers for the Dennis and the Miller families and the loss of Melanie and continue prayers for Bob. We got, there was an email that we got from Beth earlier in the week. Not only for their family, I know Beth has been having a hard time herself and probably many others who were affected by uh, her deep friendship with someone that she cared greatly about. So we offer her our condolences as well as all members of her family. Yes, Donna. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Sometimes we act like, oh, it's hard being a Christian. We got someone might say something mean to us, but we have to have God in us and all these blessings and wonderful awareness of so many people mask it in so many ways, but really have such a vast emptiness and fear inside of them. So thank you for sharing um, your encouragement, Don. Yes, Lee. Uh, I just thank God for everything. I like to have my husband, my 
Sabe, a gente vê isso que é a Rádio Ló, que é que foi aqui no município. Thank you, that's very beautiful, we stay with Lee, and uh, we'll definitely keep and mean it in our prayers for you. <coughs> Michelle? Um, I just wanted to say a praise for, for Cameron, um, it was his 18th birthday here on Friday, so we're just grateful, and then just pray for his decision coming up when he decides where he's going to go to school. And then just pray for wisdom for that. If he has a choice, it doesn't matter to go to school yet, but <laughs> just be there. <laughs> yeah. Cameron had a nice visit. He had an overnight visit at Messiah this week, and he really liked it, and some other <coughs> options and things. And then for his mother and I, I have to pay for him to go to class. <laughs> <laughs> hard to do that but at the same time you know after we lost her I was talking to her daughter I feel like we are so blessed to be able to take care of our residents and their families and just to give them peace and know that their their parents and their loved ones are taken care of and it's just a, a real blessing that you know the Lord allows us to do that mm. so let's know that our residents are loved and can go, go home to God in peace that's really uh, well stated and very beautifully put uh, we have so many opportunities to touch other people's lives and not to look at things as a burden, but instead an opportunity. And I think one of the hardest things with that is uh, we like to be the one to be the one helping, and we don't want to be the one to get help. But if you let someone help you, just think about what blessing that is to the one who you've allowed to help you, that you've given them such authority um, and power that God can use that. And uh, I know we all hesitate um, to want help, but it's actually a blessing to let someone help you. So that's a, just a little word of encouragement. Are there any other praises or prayers that you have? I just had um, I have three uh, women that I work with who lost their fathers recently, like in the last month or two. Um, and so just with the holidays coming up, they're just pray for them. Um, Sharon and Cindy and Vicki. And also, I, one of my students was, was very ill and in the hospital, and just pray for her recovery. Holidays can be very hard as they fill us with memories of people that are no longer with us. And uh, we certainly want to remember them fondly. And we pray if when those times of sadness and grief come that God helps us mourn through them. Luann? Hi, thank you, Alfie Edder's daughter. I've heard um, a lot of people, like on Wednesday night Bible study and other times, speak of what an impact that she left on many people's lives. So um, I know she spent a lot of time teaching and trying to make an impact and sharing with people. And um, surely uh, we want to remember her in this time of Thanksgiving. Yes, Mary. We really do want to. Thank you, Mary. Stephen? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, just a praise to those who lost their job this week. There were three people that just have been in my office this week that lost their jobs, and that's just kind of the first time it's had them. So that's just the three people who their lives are being affected, and uh, so it just, it, it hits hard. It just breaks my heart. Yeah, it does. 
we kind of associate so much of who we are with what people pay us to do. And when, when we don't have that identity as well as the income, it can be very difficult and traumatic for many people. But God is good and he'll, he'll bring his people through this. Thank you. Are there any other phrases or prayer requests? Seeing none, let's join our hearts. Thank you, God. Thank you for being with us when we have been alone. Thank you for healing our bodies uh, <coughs> when we have been in need of that. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our church. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for memory. Thank you for so many wonderful things. Lord, we also know that in this time there are requests that we have, concerns. We pray for Renee and she gets some. Um, hopefully goes things well with potentially having cancer. We pray for the Dennis and Miller family, uh, their loss and for the lives that they touch. And we ask that you would be with those who are going through the grieving process. We pray uh, for Dave's knee and for um, probably many others who have unspoken hurts in their joints and backs and all other kinds of things, Lord. We know that uh, such pains can be quite a distraction for us, and we just ask that you would be with those, that those pains would um, alleviate and that we would appreciate uh, when we are pain-free and not take it for granted. Uh, please be with all those who are traveling this week. Be with those who have lost loved ones in the last year, be with them through their healing and grieving process. Be with those who have lost their jobs, that they can find employment, and more importantly, cast their identity uh, onto you. And Lord, we just ask that you would watch over us and guide us, keep us safe. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you pass the peace of Christ with those who are around you?